Hi everyone, I'm Mitali and I'm going to be talking about the Metadata Engineering Manager interview process. At the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of the process itself, what interviewers look at and a bunch of tips for each round. A quick intro, I'm from Prepfully. This video has been put together by Metadata Engineering Managers who are also interview coaches on Prepfully. They've coached hundreds of candidates through the process and can be booked directly on the website if you need more personalized guidance. Right then, moving on to the interview. The Metadata Engineering Manager interview process typically kicks off with a brief recruiter chat, following which there are two knockout rounds, leadership screening and technical screening. Thereafter, you have the on-site round comprising four to five interviews. Let's dig deeper into each round. Now, the leadership screening is the first real interview in the process. It is typically with the hiring manager, which lasts 30 to 45 minutes and is unique to data EM roles at Meta. The hiring manager will really dig into your leadership and people management style. I have two tips for this round. Number one. You can expect both situational and behavioral questions here, and you'll definitely get the classic tell me about yourself and why meta questions. So be sure to practice them well. Number two, you'll face a bunch of hypothetical what if and situational tell me about a time questions. They are looking for clear detailed stories that showcase how you handle challenges and lead or grow teams and projects. So make sure you have specific examples ready. Stuff like times when you handled conflict or delivered a big achievement or managed appraisals. We'd suggest you answer in the star format. Situation, task, action, result. It can get tricky and I'd recommend practicing this interview with a metadata EM. You can schedule a leadership style mock interview with one of Meta's data engineering managers on Prepfully. Links in the description box. Right. Next up, the technical screening. It's typically a 45-minute coding session on CoderPad, execution disabled with SQL, and a language of your choice, Java, Python, or C, led by another manager or a senior IC. You'll typically get five questions covering data modeling, SQL, and basic algorithms. Three tips for this round. One. For DE manager roles, they care more about your approach, so clearly outline your thought process and structure each solution logically. Think about the why behind each step. Two, you'll be expected to provide solutions in pseudocode rather than fully executing code, and the follow-up discussions can often get complex, so be ready to tackle any big picture issues they throw your way. A last tip. This one is very much a time test of your problem solving approach. So having some pre-scripted explanations or comments for typical steps like indexing, joins, etc., can help you stay clear and efficient. We'd recommend checking out standard questions on sites like lead code and have some common data engineering patterns or solutions practiced in advance where you explain each step. Right then, on to the on-site round. You can expect three to four rounds here, starting with the technical round, which is usually broken into two rounds. The tech data exercise one and tech data exercise two. The first technical data exercise is a 45 to 60 minute technical interview, where after the introductions, you're given a problem or feature and asked to brainstorm solutions. It's a highly interactive session where you discuss different options to implement the solution. An example might be something like a streaming platform that wants to measure user engagement with specific content types. You'll explore ideas on how to measure engagement and identify the viewing patterns of the audience. It's a fun discussion, but keep in mind that by the end, they'll ask you to code a part of your solution. Tip, don't suggest anything too complex to implement unless you are sure you can code it up quickly. The next technical data exercise is also a 45 to 60 minute technical interview, but here you're given a hypothetical business or app scenario and asked to define metrics that would be important to collect. For instance, something like a social media platform wants to monitor user growth and activity. What metrics would you collect and how would you design the schema? Here, you'll need to design a database schema 
usually a dimensional model with entities, dimensions and facts or measures to support analytics. Towards the end, you'll need to write SQL queries to retrieve the metrics you proposed. Tip: Practice designing schemas for different use cases and make sure your SQL skills are sharp, especially with complex joins. So that's all on the tech interviews. Now let's discuss the system design interview where they'll dive into your past experiences with designing and building systems or products. The focus will always eventually be on large scale systems. You'll need to lead the discussion on what the system should achieve and then delve into specific areas to outline constraints and major components. Here are my five key tips. First, first off, really get a handle on the problem. We can't stress this enough. Tons of candidates dive straight into solution mode, but it's a huge mistake. Take a beat to clarify things, define your scope, lay out your goals and only then explain your action plan. This will let the interviewer guide you where they want. Next, listen up for feedback. Interviewers know the scope is basically infinite. They've got a list of themes to hit during the interview, so pay attention. If they drop hints like, let's assume XYZ isn't a constraint, that's your cue to shift gears. Or if they throw a curveball like, how about if this gets accessed worldwide daily, take it as your chance to dive into scaling strategies and maybe drop some knowledge on CDNs and caching. You're going to be coming up with a bunch of ideas and that's cool. Encourage in fact. Just make sure you mention them, explain the trade-offs, but then commit to a decision. Fourth, if you have specialized knowledge, like in kernels, file systems, networking systems, or JavaScript, be ready for questions rooted in those areas. The question might involve designing something you've never built before and is intentionally broad in scope, ensuring you won't cover every detail perfectly. So having a strong foundation in system design principles and the ability to think critically about constraints and components is key. Finally, there'll be moments when you hit a wall or aren't sure what the interview is fishing for. No big deal. It happens to everyone. The right move? Own up if you don't know. Ask if they want you to explore through some educated guesswork, but don't try to fake your way through. Prepfully has a bunch of metadata engineering managers with a ton of experience who can coach you in this regard. Book a one-on-one -on -one mock session with them directly using the link in the description box. After the system design round, you'll move on to the people leadership round. A huge chunk of this round will focus on people management and cross-functional collaboration. The interviewer will be keen on digging into work experiences that you found super interesting or challenging, especially if it tied into what you see as an opportunity at Meta. Or times you've worked cross-functionally to break down barriers for your team, or perhaps dive deep into team dynamics to boost productivity. So have a neat set of six to eight stories to give examples from that showcase your people management, conflict resolution, appraisals, coaching and or mentorship, team building and talent acquisition skills. This basically means instances where you resolve critical technical issues, guided themes to technology transitions, etc. And don't forget to include examples of both successes and failures, mistakes you made, lessons you learnt. They want the real deal. Again, STAR is the answering format that is expected. And heads up, they sometimes throw in a programming or SQL question here. It's usually pretty basic designed to check your knowledge on ETL concepts or data querying basics. So brushing up on those won't hurt. The final round in the process is the ownership round. It is a 30 minute chat with a business stakeholder where they focus on how you handle ownership of projects, how you collaborate with different stakeholders and how you make decisions when priorities overlap. After all the on-site rounds are done, the recruiter will get back to you with the panel's decision once they've gathered and discussed everyone's feedback. Anyway, that's all for this guide then. Lots of additional resources in the description below. Don't forget to check them out. Thanks and good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully. 
and we hope you totally rock your interview.